empty and person in removal. Um, this is a clean technique. It's not considered sterile because um, what we're doing is we're going in and we're going past the nasal passages and in down into the stomach. So it's not considered uh, sterile, but we still want to be as clean as possible. So of course your first step is making sure that you double check your orders, um, that you pick the right tube that you need for whatever you need to do. So if you have to do suction on this patient, you want to make sure you have a, what we call a phalum pump or a phalum pump. Um, and this is what it looks like. You have this long root tube in here on the bottom, um, as well as this white tip here. And then we have other tubes that are just a single lumen, we'll call, um, where if you're just giving medications or if you're just flushing, if you're just um, doing it for compre decompression of the stomach, then we would use this type of uh, tube. We're doing decompression, we need to have hook up suction. Anytime you need to hook up suction, you need to fill them up. Okay? Um, but this one is just usually used for feeding, pretty much. Um, so we're going to insert the cell and pump today. And you want to make sure you have all of your supplies. So I need a blue cup pad, I need my tubing, I might need some uh, normal saline. I need some water-soluble lubricant. Do we know why we need water-soluble lubricant? Um, the water is the same balance as what's in our system. Because we use a different kind of lubricant, it can increase your chances of the patient being uh, active in the moment. Okay, so we want to use water-soluble. Um, for lab purposes, I have to use a spray lubricant, but you won't see this in the real world. Um, you'll have a little packet of lubricant to use. Um, and then we also need some tape. Other, the other thing you can do that your checklist in your book talks about is instead of using the, the soluble, uh, the water soluble lubricant, you can also use just lukewarm water and soak your um, tubing in the water to lubricate it before insertion. You could do either or. Um, but we're going to do the lubricant today. And so I also want to have a measurement tape to see how far I have to go in. And I want to have a tongue blade to make sure that I can see that it's going down where it's supposed to be going and that the tubing is not coiling in the mouth when I start my procedure. We want a cup of water, um, just a small amount. We don't want the water to, the patient to be taking big gulps of water. We want them to have small sips of the water. Um, because if they take big gulps, that can increase their chances of getting um, nauseated and vomiting. So we want to have an emesis basin just in case you need it and some tissue. Okay. You also want to have a syringe for after insertion, you have to check your uh, placement. And I'll, show, I'll go through how to do that. So I would have checked my orders, come in, identified my patient, done my hand hygiene, and I'm going to put down this blue check for incidentals. I'm going to bring the patient up to at least a semi fowler's position, make sure they're comfortable. Um, and then to start, the first thing I want to do is check the nares. So I want to check them for patency. So what I would do is um, hold one side down of the nostril, have them breathe in through the other side, make sure that it's patent, and then do it on the, sa the other side, the same thing. Have them breathe in and make sure it's patent. And we're going to go for the side that's the most patent or where they feel like they're not congested or anything like that. Um, because we want to make sure that we have a good patency <coughs> for our tubing. Um, the other thing we want to do is probably take a pin light and inspect inside, make sure there are no pores or anything inside. Um, and then we'll go ahead and go for the side that we feel most comfortable with. Um, all right, so the other thing I mentioned yet was you want to have a safety pin to secure some patients down. So what I'm going to do before I start, I'm going to prepare my tape first. The tape that I need to secure it on the nose. What I do is make little legs with one end of the tape that are nice and even, and that will wrap, wrap up and around the tubing, and I'll show you how to do that. But I set that up. 
I'm also going to get another piece of tape just to turn it to the gown when I'm done. This piece of tape, I'm going to fold over itself and then safety pin it to the patient's gown as opposed to safety pinning this directly into the gown. Just adds a little extra um, safety measure. Alright, so I will put on my gloves. Those of you who clean gloves, right? I need to measure how far I have to go down um, into the mirrors. I should have prepared another piece of tape for that, actually, to mark my spot. So I'm going to get another piece of tape here, a small piece. So to measure, we take the tip of the tubing and we start at the end of the ear lobe and go to the tip of the nose. That's your first measurement. Then you want to go from your tip of the nose down to the xiphoid process. So we know where that is, right? So we fill for that. That's our spot. We go ahead and mark that with a piece of tape so we know where to stop inserting. Because we don't go, we don't want to go further than that. <coughs> so then at this point you would sit your tubing in your lukewarm water or into your lubricant. Then I'm going to explain to the patient I'm going to go ahead and start inserting. And what I want them to do is um, hyperextend their head back a little bit to start. So that's just to get the first five centimeters in. Once you get past that five first centimeters, you're going to start getting a gag reflex. Okay? And that's where you want them to put your small sips of water. So I want to have this available. So they will hyperextend their neck. Let's say I've decided I'm going for this right there. So I'm going to go straight in. And boom, right there, I probably hit that gag reflex. Have them bring their head up a little bit. Take a small sip of water. Okay, take that away. And as they're sipping, as they're drinking, you continue to advance. Sometimes you might meet resistance, like I am now. Sorry, he's biting me. So when you meet resistance, you want to just give it a little twirl, and it should continue to advance. If your patient starts getting, um, you know, hypoxic or they're really coughing and gagging a lot, um, they seem to be in distress, you want to stop the procedure and remove it right away. All right, so this, this went in all the way to my spot. So what I want to do now is secure this on the nose with my tape that I prepared with my little legs. The flat part of your tape goes against the bridge of the nose. And the paper tape does not work well with the mannequins, but we work with what we got. And then these legs, I'm going to wrap up and around the tubing and back onto the nose. Okay, so this one, I'm going to bring it down and around and up. And this one, I'm going to come the opposite direction, down this way, around, and up. Sometimes we can use an adhesive, um, an adhesive wipe to help with the adhesive, or skin prep, we call it, to help the tape stick. And a lot of times, um, nowadays, the facilities have packages with um, a nose thing already in it, so you, it's already self-adhesive and you just have to slap that on. But sometimes we have to use tape the old-fashioned way. Um, so then at this point, I'm going to go ahead and secure it to the gown. Take this tape, turn anywhere down here. A good thing to do is have the patient turn their head to the opposite direction of where the tube is. So I would ask this patient to turn to the left side just to make sure I give them enough slack to move. And then I will find this 
plot on the gown here to trim them. A lot of tubes have the um, measurements on the outside of them already. Um, so you can just kind of take, me take note of the measurement that's there at the mirror. That's where you, the insertion is. Um, or you can take your measurement tape and we're going to measure in centimeters and measure from the end of the nose down to the end of the tubing. And that way you know how far you have inserted it and you don't want it to come too much further out than that. Um, the other thing to be mindful of is that this is the patient's air vent. So we want to keep this dry. We want to keep it clean. Um, sometimes when we're flushing these tubes with medications and fluids, sometimes fluid can get caught up in here in this new tubing and that's their air vent. So you want to keep it clear. Um, so one of the things you can do if there is debris or something in here, you want to take this lens um, and insert about 30, 30 ml of air to clear it, just to clear it. So you want to make sure that's clear. Um, Alright, so then after that, what we need to do is check for placement. So there's a couple of things we can do. First we're going to have make sure that there, there's an x-ray order for the patient to make sure that she's standing and she's stomach in the right place. The other thing we can do as nurses, we can take our syringe, we're going to attach it here at the end, and we're going to aspirate, and we're going to try to get some gastric contents back. We'll have some pH paper available at the bedside, so once you aspirate some contents, you test it with your pH, pH paper to see if it's acidic or not. And how will you know if it's acidic or not? What number would we be looking for? Below, is it below seven your book says, or is it below five? Okay, around three, four. Um, that's what we're going to be looking for. So that's how one way you can test for um, placement. If you get acidic contents back, then you know you're in the stomach. Okay. Any questions about that? Um, at this point, the suction could be hooked up here to order for suction. Um, you want to test your suction first, of course, make sure it's on and it's working properly before you attach it. Um, I think that's it. Okay? Alright, so removal. Removal is very simple. We're just going to do the same thing with our indirect care. Um, I'm going to also make sure I have a blue chuck pad for removal as well. And the first thing I would do is take the Unpin it from the gown. Take the tape off of the nose. And of course, I would have my patient in the same semi-solid, at least semi-solid position. All right, I'm going to make sure I have tissues available again in the emergency station just in case I need it. I'm going to ask the patient to take a deep breath and hold it, and as they hold, I'm just going to pull this straight out and put it right here on my chuck pad. Um, offer them a tissue, they can blow their nose, um, I would assess their nares, make sure that there's no sores or anything inside, um, make sure that they're comfortable, have some ice chips available or some water so they won't keep their mouth in and be dry. Um, these patients need very good oral care. Um, and then we want to make sure that we assess our tubing, right? When we pull this out, make sure it's all intact um, and assess any type of trimmings that might be on the tip or anything like that that we might be concerned about. Okay. Any questions? 